Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Reisinger. Topping the news tonight, a big announcement for Billings and the state of Montana as a Colorado-based medical school details plans to open here in the Magic City. Rocky Vista University plans to build a 135,000 square foot medical school on the West End. Q2's Andrea Lutz has the details on what prospective students can expect and what it means for Billings. This 12 acre parcel will serve as the footprint for Montana's first medical school. As Rocky Vista University announces, it's coming to Billings. The proposed four year privately funded medical school will offer students a doctor of osteopathic medicine degree and after accreditation could break ground in May. There's four states in the United States that does not have its own medical school. That's Alaska, Wyoming, Montana, and Delaware. And we want to support and help the same mission, which is producing more physicians for this region. Officials with RVU say Montana was a natural fit because of an already qualified health care system. There may only be 100,000 people that live here, but this wonderful health care system you've developed, this m medical mile, serves over 600,000 people throughout the region. What it's missing is a medical school. And the potential economic impact is huge, set to bring in millions of dollars to the community, along with over 300 jobs. Think of the world-class health care and investment that's already been made in our community from Billings Clinic and St. Vincent Healthcare and Riverstone Health and others. Marrying that investment that is foundational to our economy and the work that we already do and was foundational to how we have been responding to the pandemic. And the medical school will use the partnership of Billings Clinic, St. Vincent Healthcare and Riverstone Health to further engage students in their studies. Rocky Vista University was founded in 2006 and Montana will be its third state behind Colorado and Utah. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thanks, Andrea. And if you're wondering the difference between an MD and a DO, a doctor of osteopathic medicine, the short answer is an MD is a traditional medicine degree, whereas an DO takes a holistic mind-body-spirit approach to care. In the U.S., the same licensing boards give licenses to both types of doctor, and they must meet the same standards for practicing medicine. The group hopes to be accredited by this April. Guatsi Hopa Duhiname Itzatuitsa Shuimi Hanu. Chairman Manchin, Ranking Member Barrasso, members of the committee, thank you so much for having me here today. New Mexico Democratic Congresswoman Deb Holland appeared before the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee today for her confirmation hearing to lead the Department of Interior. If confirmed, President Biden's pick for the Interior Secretary would be the first Native American member of the cabinet. Well, Montana's Republican U.S. Senator Steve Daines is expressing concern about President Biden's nominee. In fact, Daines had a lengthy exchange with Holland during her confirmation hearing. MTN's Mike Dennison has more. The New Mexico Congresswoman would be the first Native American confirmed as a presidential cabinet appointee. But at Tuesday's hearing, Holland faced tough questions from many Republicans, most of them from oil and gas states. Wyoming Senator John Barrasso said the Biden administration is taking a sledgehammer to western state's economy by banning new oil and gas leasing on federal lands. In his first month in office, President Biden has declared war on American energy. He's crushed jobs and threatened vital education funds for our children. Representative Holland's past statements show that she agrees with this strategy. And then there was Senator Daines, who asked Holland about whether grizzly bears should be listed as recovered in the Yellowstone ecosystem and their management returned to the states. He also asked about her previous calls to ban fracking and oil pipelines and oil and gas leasing on federal lands. On November 19th, 2020, you said that if you had it your way, and I quote, you'd stop oil and gas leasing on public lands. As secretary, uh, you will get to have it your way. Will you recommend extending the leasing moratorium? And how do you justify this moratorium with the requirements of the federal law under the Mineral Leasing Act? Senator, it's my understanding that it is a pause on just new leases, not existing uh, valid leases. And if I'm confirmed as secretary, it is President Biden's agenda, not my own agenda, that I would be moving forward. 
Danes asked what Holland would say to eastern Montanans who've lost their job because of the cancellation of the Keystone XL pipeline. Holland said she will do everything she can to make Biden energy policies work for all Americans and that she had faith that clean energy will create jobs too. But she also said in her opening statement that there is no question that fossil fuel energy will play a major role in America for years to come. Conservation, public lands, and Native American groups in Montana are strongly behind Holland's nomination. Tahin Perez of Western Native Voice, a group based in Billings, said Holland has a reputation of working across the aisle on many issues. We don't believe that she's a radical. We don't believe that she is a puppet for uh, any sort of agenda with the Green New Deal. Um, I think that she is her own independent, free-thinking person uh, and has clearly voiced and expressed her desire to build consensus with um, all political players. Whatever happens to Holland's confirmation, it looks like fossil fuels versus clean energy will continue to be a divisive issue here in the West. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Also today, the Senate confirmed Tom Vilsack to lead the U.S. Department of Agriculture by a 92 to 7 vote. It'll be the second time that Vilsack has led the USDA. Lawmakers are looking for answers into the security failures during the January 6th assault on the Capitol. Today, the Senate held a joint hearing with two committees questioning the men in charge of security that day, several of whom were forced into retirement following the assault. A failure to communicate seemed to be a big part of the problem. Former U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun testified that he only learned this week about an FBI memo sent out the day before the insurrection warning of potential violence. Also, Robert Conti, the chief of police for Washington, D.C., said the Army questioned the optics of deploying the National Guard when the request was made during the attack. My response to that uh, was simply, I was just stunned uh, that, you know, I have officers that were out there literally fighting for their lives. Senators say this is just the first of multiple hearings looking into that attack. Golf legend Tiger Woods remains hospitalized tonight after being seriously injured in a one-car accident. Emergency crews had to free Woods from his mangled vehicle in Los Angeles County this morning after he lost control of it. Woods' agent says he suffered multiple leg injuries and underwent surgery afterwards. It's unclear what caused the accident. The 45-year-old Woods was in the area for an annual golf tournament in the Pacific Palisades. Q2 Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh joining us now for a first look at weather. And Ed, you've got a little history lesson for us tonight. That's right. Thanks to a viewer, uh, PJ sent in some pictures old school way because we're going to talk about the old school way we used to show the weather. Here's a um, weather map from back, or at least a weather graphic from back in the day, 1989. And as close as I can figure, this is like Groundhog Day, February 2nd. You can check out some of those cold temperatures on the map there. And uh, Billings temperatures forecast for 32 below zero. You can see Livingston, where PJ's from, uh, forecasting temperatures 36 for an overnight low below zero, 26 below for a daytime high. Here's a graphic that might look familiar to a lot of Q2 viewers from back in the day. And this is the one that I really enjoyed the most. As you can see, wind chill temperatures near 90 below zero. PJ just wanted to point out that this February wasn't the coldest February that we've had. Now that we've seen a little rebound in the temperatures, we'll come back and take a look at the temperatures that we'll see in the coming week in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Ed. A bill that seeks to delay the start of Montana's recreational marijuana program for one year is working its way through the state legislature. The owners of a medical marijuana dispensary here in Billings say they stand to lose millions if the delay goes through. Q2's Mitch Leggy has more. In November last year, Montana voters passed initiatives to bring recreational marijuana to the state in a program that was supposed to begin in January 2022. A bill introduced to the state legislature last week by Republican State Representative Bill Mercer of Billings seeks to delay the start of the program by one year, citing the need for more time to implement the recreational program that needs 100 employees. If Montana's recreational marijuana program gets pushed back one year, the owners of Montana Advanced Caregivers, a medical dispensary in Billings, say that the state stands to lose millions of dollars in tax revenue. It would be foolish for this state to not make that investment now before other people start supplying the people 
with this market that's been created. An economic study done by the University of Montana last year found the state could bring in 43 million in tax revenue in 2022 with recreational marijuana. And the state is already profiting off of pot through the medical marijuana program. Montana advanced caregivers have been supplying medical patients with marijuana products since 2008, and its owners hope to expand into the recreational market. We've made product and we're ramped up for it. We've uh, built more facilities. We were creating more products as we speak. Uh, we're building more locations. We have three locations and we're building our fourth right now. When voters approved the recreational marijuana initiatives, it made the substance legal to possess in small amounts. Smith said delaying the licensure of recreational marijuana shops will just drive the market underground. In the state legislature this session, there have thus far been eight bills introduced to amend the state's recreational marijuana laws in some way. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Thanks, Mitch. House Bill 457 is scheduled for a hearing on Friday in the State House Business and Labor Committee. Head on the MTN News at 10 on Q2, some encouraging news about COVID cases in Montana. And if the travel bug is biting for a spring break getaway, which you need to know before you go. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Active COVID-19 cases across Montana are below 2,000 for the first time since September. Two more Yellowstone County residents have died, though, bringing the state's total death toll to 1,360. Reported total cases are nearing 100,000. More than 96,000 Montanans have now recovered. The recent storms across the country have turned into a shortage of COVID-19 vaccine here in Montana. That's impacting the mass vaccination clinic at Metro Park. In fact, all of the appointments are already full this week. Scheduled vaccines took place today and will run tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 11.30, then from 1 to 4.30. Riverstone providers will know more about numbers tomorrow and how clinics will look moving forward. Well, traditional spring break is just around the corner and you or someone you know may be making plans to get away, even though we are still in a pandemic. Tonight, Q2's Janelle Slade has some important information to keep in mind if you plan to fly. It's awesome. It's been super nice since we've been down here. A little windy, but hey, I will take that in 80 degrees any day over zero. <laughs> It took Rita Bishop and her husband, Dean, three tries to reach their favorite destination. We tried to go last August, but the borders to Belize hadn't opened up yet, so um, they didn't actually start letting people back in until October 1st. The second time was in November we tried to come down and my husband ended up getting COVID, so we had to cancel that trip. Um, so we considered this hopefully being third time the charm. <laughs> The bishops are a little bit different kind of traveler. Rita works for Billings Clinic, so she's already been vaccinated. And as you just heard, her husband has already recovered from COVID-19. And they own the condo they're going to visit. Despite all of this, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends not traveling. If people make a different choice, they need to understand the risks that they're taking. And they need to be prepared to what they would do if one of their family members or they get sick. Nancy Iverson, director of patient safety and infection control at Billings Clinic, says when people ask her opinion, she says delay travel. But she also understands the lure. They have reasons their their children are getting married or their there's grandchildren or children being born. There's real reasons and for those situations, you just need to understand your risk and how to minimize and reduce your risk. Flying was actually great. When we went from Billings to Denver, I didn't have anyone else in the row with me. So if you choose to buy the ticket and board the plane for paradise work or family, the top priority is planning. Before you leave home, you need to know what the, the country requires. Um, but we had to go get tested because we had to have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of entering the border of Belize. The bishops have studied the do's and don'ts, and it's not a simple list. We had done our due diligence and downloaded the app that we needed to prior to um, coming into the country. Um, we had to fill out a whole bunch of questions to make sure that you were gonna be allowed to come in. You have to assume everybody 
around you is positive. I would wipe all the surfaces that you would touch. I would have eyewear on. I would have my mask on. Before you fly anywhere, Iverson says study the CDC guidelines. Truly learn how to wash your hands correctly. Do not touch your face. Have disinfectant wipes and extra hand sanitizer, at least 60% alcohol, always within reach. Pack extra masks and learn how to properly fit them. Purchase approved eyewear to protect your mucous membranes and wear them. And keep interactions brief. Most people think this is six feet. That's two of my arms is six feet. So you want six feet between you at a minimum and really try to not interact with people outside your household. Travelers need to be aware, do their homework, and have a mindset of safety because that lure to get away. It's kind of relaxing and um, hitting the beach a lot more and, and just having a lot of warm fun. <laughs> could end up much more complicated than just boarding your flight. In Billings, Janelle Slade, MTN News. Thanks, Janelle. The CDC has a good outline to follow, so you know what you need to before, during, and after you travel. And you may decide it's just too much of a hassle. Rita says in Belize, travelers caught without their masks are getting $500 fines. All right, taking a live look outside on this Tuesday night from the Stockman Bank weather cam. Ed McIntosh standing by to bring you the full forecast right after the break.